Hello, hello, and welcome to Rory's Brainworks, where we get creative and see if it works. Today is an especially exciting day, not because I have a really great tutorial for you guys, but it is my birthday. Yes, yes, yes. Please don't feel obligated to spam happy birthday in the comments, but if you want to, eh. I'm also excited because I've toiled over a long time trying to figure out how to create these collapsible handcuffs that are attached to the waist, and finally, I figured out how to do it. Usually these sorts of epiphanies come from dreams, but this one didn't, it's just a happy mistake. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's aggravating how simple that is. Hmm, okay. I was thinking too much on it. Sometimes you gotta take a step back, take a break from it, and that'll help you create a little bit better. Now, even though it is my birthday, we must first be safe, sane, and consensual. Safety, be sure to have some safety shears with you at all times. You can always get a new rope, you can't get a new life. And consensual, me, Marie, and Crochet Rory are all consenting adults. Communication is key. Now, before we take a deep dive into this waist cuff tutorial, we must first thank my sponsors, Knothead Nylon. Knothead Nylon is the destination for all your premium nylon rope bondage needs. Easy to clean, water resistant, up to 1100 pounds of weight load, and in a wide array of beautiful, vibrant colors, Knothead Nylon will slake your rope desires. At checkout, put in discount code RORY10 for 10% off. I don't usually toot my own horn, but it's my birthday, so fuck it. Only in private. <laughs> Yeah, the bad jokes are also still funny. Give me a break. There were a lot of working, moving parts inside of this rig. It was hard to create wrist cuffs that were safe. I mean, nothing's really ever truly safe, but safer. That didn't cinch on either end because I'm not using a single column tie on them. That would also collapse if you needed it to. Not for escape, but to undo it very quickly. And it works. It works. That's the hard part. You might be able to do it, but does it work? Does it look nice? I think some most of the parts of it look nice, but if I spend a lot more time on it, I'm pretty sure I could whittle out some of the rough edges up to it, but I, I really like this one. So let's get down to it. So I start this by going to the waist and then going to either cuff and creating a spot in the middle just below the waist where it rests. Why did I do that? I could have just as easily throw a single column tie on one wrist go around the waist in some fancy design, and then finished it up on this wrist. So why not that? Symmetry. You have a normal single column tie over here because you have the bite of the rope, but then this one over here is a rather abnormal single column tie. It also left this area in the waist prone to cinching without putting a bulky lock into it. And then you have this part right here at the end. If you have any leftover rope, what are you doing with that? It's already off kilter with this asymmetrical side to it. All right, so you come from the waist and then down to the hands. Why not split the rope and go around? Anytime you split the rope like this, instead of going with a double strand, it makes the rope more sharp. I know it's hard to think about when it comes to something so rounded, but something singular becomes more sharp. The tension on it becomes a little bit more coarse and hard. No matter how soft the rope is, when you take the double strand and go to a single strand, you reduce the surface tension. At that point in time, it bites a little bit harder. So going that way will probably make it a little bit more uncomfortable. You could likely do so and create a good design, but what I will show you will make sense when we get there. And you'll be like, yeah, that seems like the best course of action. <laughs> so let's do it. So I have the bite of my rope, the middle of my rope, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit of slack from it and I'm gonna have it go around the waist. Now we're gonna have it tight around the waist because it's gonna sit on the iliac crest right here, preventing it from going down. Just like the wrist is preventing the cuff from going over the hand. I'm gonna have the bite go around the uh, bottom. So I'm going around once more, making sure to keep my rope straight. Uh, now my bite ended up right here, uh, not far enough, so I'm going to uh, maneuver the rope around. To where I have a little bit more. So I got the bite of my rope right here, and the tail end of my rope right here. Et voila! Now I want just about this amount, if not a little bit less, for what I will be doing. Is it necessary? Not nah, really, but I like the look of it. So we are around here, tighten that up. Marie, how is that tightness? Alrighty then. 
Do you need me to adjust it at all? Are you just being tough? All right, so I got the bite of the rope and the tail end of the rope right here. The bite of the rope is gonna cross over that tail end and wind up down here. Now this amount of loop is roughly what I'm looking for. So I have this tail end right here. It's going to go underneath as well and around. Cool. I'm gonna fix this right here a little bit. So here we go. So it sits just like that. So I've had the tail end go underneath and around and I'm gonna keep this little loop and I'm going to put it over the bite loop right here. And then I'm going to send the rope through both of them. Which is then going to give this, this beautiful looking belt right here. You can tighten that up. Solid. Sits inside, just above the waist, just above the iliac crest, and it can't pass down any further. Cool, we have that set in place. So which do I go to? Do I go left or do I go right? Depending on which way you did the bite and which way you did the knot. So if you started the bite going the other way, you would probably want to go this way. But just feel it out. Feel it out right now. What does it feel like to you? When you go this way, how does it feel? Does it feel awkward? When you go this way and turn it this way, ah, that feels much better. The way it's locking inside here, going that way feels off. This way, right. Why? Because of cross tension, the way that we ended up doing this knot. Sometimes you have to feel it out. Now let's get to what makes this tie so great. This wrist cuff. So we're gonna come this way, and we're gonna create the first part of the cuff, the first locking mechanism of it. So we're actually gonna do is create an overhand knot. The knot goes over itself. It'll go through the loop that it created, and that will be the area that's actually going to be creating our first lock because it will not lock down this way. So that means when it's attached to the wrist, this area, if it gets pulled, will not cinch and tighten around the wrist. We do not want that. You wanna have a little extra right here because we're going to be, um, it's gonna be splayed out like that, but then we're gonna bring it back a little bit. I'm actually gonna give it just a smidgen more. Boop, boop, boop. Cool. Now, we're not going to pull this all the way through. This is actually the part that was the mad brilliance. So we're gonna create this. We're gonna put the hand through it. No, we're gonna get a little bit more because I know it needs it. We're gonna go around and we're gonna come up through the middle. And actually, I'm going to need a little bit more. So let's get a little closer. So I need more than that. Easy enough. Bring it back around, give myself a little more. One of the most important things you want to know about this is that these areas right here that go around, we want those, those ropes to be as straight as possible. So when you're creating this, make sure that it's going, it's very straight around here. Cool. Now, where do we go from here? If I pull this down a little bit, you can see that this rope right here, which was through this original loop right here, can still cinch. If I pull on this rope right here, it's going to tighten this area right here. It will cinch that and we do not want that. We have to create a locking mechanism. So we're gonna take this and go over and around the original body of the rope as well. So essentially we took the loopies that are a part of this, had the rope go around it and around the original body of the first rope. And now we're going to go through this loop. So we're gonna come out and through that loop. Tighten that down. Wonderful. It's going to create a locking system that's actually longer on a plane. Usually when you have a locking system, it's more rounded. Well, this is a little bit more oval shaped like this. Does it look bad? No, actually it really doesn't. I'll show you how it collapses at the end when we finish. So for the moment, let's move on. We're gonna go around the waist, over the pubis area, towards the other wrist. Like I said, around the pubis area, towards the other wrist. So since we're coming this way and starting on the opposite side, does that mean we have to do it backwards? No, actually, because technically it's sort of the same backwards and forwards. I know, pretty crazy, huh? So once again, I'm gonna create an overhand knot and then we're gonna stick this through there. At this point in time, I can dictate the uh, tightness, the length between the wrists. And I want that to be a little bit more snug, which is essentially undoing the overhand knot and then moving it closer towards the center, use this loop to tighten it down closer over there. Overhand knot, not a difficult thing to adjust. Awesome, so we got this loopy thing. We're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. We're gonna pull through the area that can still cinch, give us a good amount. We're gonna start by going over the wrist and around. 
and through. Just like that. Super easy. Then we're going to cross over that in order to lock it. So we're going to cross over once again. We bring this loop forward. We're going to have the tail end cross over it and across the body that we just were. And then through the loop. So we're going to reach in and through that loop. Loop. And then we're going to tighten it. We have a locking system that is oval shaped like the last one. And there we have it. You can see that they are the same. Now, what are we going to do to finish this up? Much like you would with a gote shibari or a box tie, I'm going to come up this way and grab this area. So I'm going to come up from behind it, and then we're going to go in the opposite direction. Create that cross tension. We're going to pull it down to where it's in the center so it doesn't move from this line coming down. Once we do that, we're going to create X friction, which means we're going to go underneath again and then go in the opposite direction. Since we went up and down this way, we're going to go up and down this way. This is the area where you want to create a lot of tightness. X friction requires a lot of tightness because that's going to lock down everything that's been going on. So we're going to do that again. We're going to come down, go over this way. But instead, we're going to loosen that a little bit, create a loop, and go through it. Tighten that up. Awesome. That's essentially it. We have created what we wanted to create. Could I definitely work with it, spend some time on it to make it that much more aesthetically pleasing? Probably. I already think it looks nice. I already think it looks pleasing. You have the symmetry between these two uh, locking mechanisms right here and then these two friction mechanisms right here. This is solid. It's in place. You can get your finger inside there easily and they won't cinch. It won't cinch from this side and it won't cinch from this side. It is locked. That way the pressure remains the same. Since it can't cinch and it can't loosen, that means it won't go over the hands and it won't go uncomfortably up the forearm. Cool. Locked in place. Now I got about two and a half, three feet of rope on each strand. What do I want to do with it? <sighs> That's homework rope. There's actually a lot of things you can do with it. One of which is trying to create a design using continual uh, X friction. So you go underneath and around the opposite side, get a little bit of looseness, go through that loop, tighten that down, do the same thing. Go around, looseness, go through the loop, lock it down. You can see the pattern already being created inside of it. That's one of the things you can do to uh, get rid of some of the, uh, the leftover rope, or you could have it go simply around, kind of create that bar effect. What you actually could do is at this point, separate them and have each one of them go around. Keep some tightness to it. I think you would only do something like this if you were doing a photo shoot or what have you in order to clean up your lines and make it look nice. Otherwise, doing something like that, creating that repetitious, tedious pattern, will make it difficult to undo. And a big part of what I created has how it's easy to undo, which I will show you here in a moment. Let me undo this area too. I mean, one of the other things you can do with the length of rope that you have is that you can tie the uh, person in question, the model in question, to something. You have a length of rope that's not going anywhere, might as well attach them to something. So let me show you the collapsible parts of this. Speaking of which, Marie, how has all the pressure been? Has it been nice? Cool. I'm glad. So when we go backwards on this locking mechanism, the only thing that isn't collapsible is this area right here. So we pull that out through the ropes and what have you. That leads us back to this point right here. All you got to do, push that through, that's out, and then pull right here. And that'll take it out of the overhand knot as well. That is done. It's out. You're, th you're no longer bound by it. That's crazy. Let's do it on the other side now. Pull through. This is the only area that isn't collapsible. As soon as you have pulled through, you have this loop that is now free. It just goes around the wrist. Pull on either side there. Un overhand knot comes undone. That simple. All you're left with is the waist single column. That's not too difficult to undo. Look at that. Toot toot. Hey, <laughs> I hope you had as much fun learning from that tutorial as we did at teaching it to you. Uh, she was being naughty and felt like a prisoner, so she wanted to be locked away in the next room. I think that is what that sound is. She did have her lucky spoon with her, so she might be trying to dig her way out.
No, I don't think she'll make it at all. I think she's just gonna cause some structural damage as she normally does, and then get bored and do something else. Anywho, I'd be remiss if I did not bring up my other lovely sponsors today, the wonderful people over at Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash Rora's Brain Works, just like this YouTube channel. They are my rope vanguard, my colonizers of dreams, and without them, these ropey endeavors would be <laughs> way harder to accomplish. Thank you for spending your time with me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this madness, and comment down below what kind of ropey things you would like us to teach you. As always, I'm Rory. This is our brain. I'm fairly certain it works. Be safe and go create some art.